YouTubers, Mike Martin's here. Mike Martin's channel. I want to thank everyone for joining me on another housing crisis discussion. I'm really liking it how it's going to be the race of the media. It's going to be the race to who's going to break the story of the housing crash first. I'm seeing a lot of media outlets now starting to spill the beans a bit to kind of the calming investors, uh, the calming the investors articles over. Calm the investors down. It's going to be okay. It's just the ripple is over. Those articles are done now. It's looking like it's going into full throttle and actually discussing what is happening in the housing market. I didn't buy in 10 years ago because it was overpriced. I didn't buy in five. I bought in a year ago, but I bought way outside the damn city and I got a lot for what I paid. I got a lot what I paid. But what I'm saying is for the people that, that for the fear of buying out and the people that were fear of losing, it's a market. There's winners and losers. There's always somebody with the short end of the stick in the end. It's musical chairs. I learned this when I bought my first stocks. When I, I think it was I, at 19, I opened my first direct investing account. And I bought my first stocks. And I, I started to learn and understand how the equity markets work. How, how, how the gold and bond markets work. Understanding features markets and, and, and currencies and exchanges and stuff. I didn't learn any of this stuff in school. Now, it's going to be the article wars. You're going to start seeing, first, in the month of March, up until Q1, it's article wars. Who's going to be the first to start breaking the news that it's happened, the hammer has fallen, it's game over? Who's going to be the first? Secondly, when summer hits, it's going to be the all-around blame game. Who's the blame for the housing market? And I did uh, Trends in the Housing Market on Wednesday, and I was talking to you guys about it, saying I dedicated that show to who's the blame for the housing crisis. Is it our politicians? Is it investors? Is it speculators? Is it the Canadian, uh, what do you call them, the um, baby boomers buying five, six properties with the equity in their existing home? Is it is it uh, millennials? Who Whose fault is it anyway, right? So there's a number of things that uh, underlying things that are happening that we don't even know. This is what we could see. So now, <laughs> now we're going to start to see the article wars. You're going to start seeing articles coming out where no more common investor articles you're going to start seeing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start seeing Better Dwelling cranking out better uh, articles straightforward to the point like they usually do. Better Dwelling was the only one the whole time. And everything else went against Better Dwelling. You know, you got some ripples in some of the articles that were released in the last eight months. A couple of ripples. Just a hiccup. Oh, it's just a, a, a counter hit. But the measures should correct themselves. But right now, if you're living in Canada and you're alive, you, you, it's a great time to be alive to see what's going to happen. Because this housing bubble is the biggest in the history of bubbles because of how it's so overly inflated. Homes in Miami went from 90,000 to 230, 300,000. They didn't go from from 90,000 to 2 million dollars. So you're going to see a huge change. So when people are living in the states it's like big deal, we've had a whole bunch of crashes. Well, who cares? No, this is different. Canada's housing bubble is so different. We're going to have huge media wars. You're going to see YouTube channels like mine get shut down. You're going to start seeing um, a lot of, you know, people up, uh, upset about the, about what's happened. A lot of people are going to be stating, we didn't know this was going to happen. Uh, I, w I didn't know. No one told me that this was going to happen. I, I thought it was going to keep going up. You're going to see a ton of lawsuits going around because of what they, people were told when they bought and it's a great time to buy and blah, blah, blah. I've been telling you guys since day one. Six years now, I've been making these housing videos. Not to buy into this market if you're long term. If you're just going to buy and flip and Mickey Mouse and and uh, tax evade and stuff like that and try to Mickey Mouse things and Canada, it's tough. In the U.S., it's easier to buy and flip homes. They even make TV shows about it. 
Canada, it's a lot tougher. You know, but but for me to you guys, I think it's going to be the Blaine game. Q one's going to come out first week, of, first second week of April. We're going to get the numbers out. I'll be a, I'll, maybe I'll do a two or three hour live show with Collins, uh, talking about uh, Q one, going over the numbers and what's happening in Australia, New Zealand, uh, uh, the UK, uh, Canada, United States. We could start seeing what's going to evolve from these Q1 numbers, provided provided they're upfront and true, provided they're not um, fabricated, which anything nowadays could be fabricated. Everything could be fabricated to adjust to the agenda. You're still going to see a couple of news outlets out there that are going to be saying, don't worry, this is just something that you could, you know, we could ride this out. It's okay. Calm investors. Don't worry. But there's a couple of news outlets right now that are not calming investors anymore. And they said, you know what? I'm done. We need to tell people what's going on. So that's kind of good in a way it's coming out. I can't wait till Q1 is up. And then we're going to see a lot of news wars. And then it's the great Canadian housing blame game this summer. Whose fault is it anyway? Anyways, guys, Mike Martin's here. Saturday night. Let me know what you guys think. Comment below. Thanks for watching.